be back. I want to thank all the folks that sat in during the course of the vacation, although I didn't really have a vacation, but that's not your problem. But I've been chomping at the bit, or is it champing at the bit? Been checking me out on social media? When I'm not on the air, that's where I am. Ask Mr. Producer. He has to post all these things I send to him, morning, noon, and night. I think it is unequivocal now. There's simply no debate that the Democrat Party hates America. That the Democrat Party press hate America. They hate this country to its core. They hate the country because you, the voter, don't give them power. In fact, from time to time, you actually change parties and give the other parties some power. They do not seek to represent the American people. They seek to impose their will on the American people. The commander-in-chief, the president of the United States, exercises his solemn duty under the Constitution to protect this nation, to protect our armed forces, to protect our embassy, to prevent a regime of almost half a century at war with the United States from conducting itself in a way that harms further American citizens. And the commander-in-chief is under full-scale 24-7 attack by the Democrat Party media. He's under attack by the Democrats in the United States Congress. They went on and on and on about Ukraine. Ukraine was unable to defend itself, they said, because Trump withheld military aid for 55 days. Now, of course, Obama withheld military aid from Ukraine forever, throughout his presidency, even when it was being invaded by Russia. But that's okay. That's Obama. Meanwhile, the President of the United States eliminates this piece of you-know-what, this subhuman cockroach who has the blood of tens of thousands of human beings on his hands, including American soldiers. Soleimani. And they attack our president. President's defending our country. And they come up with one phony excuse after another. And they include the media. Well, he didn't tell Congress, Nancy Pelosi said. Well, where was Congress? Congress was finishing its recess. Where were they? Junketing all over the world? The House Intelligence Committee. How many hearings has the House Intelligence Committee held in Iran and the dangers Iran poses to the United States military, to our diplomats and these various embassies and consulates? To the American people, to its surrogates, Hezbollah, which has networks, secret networks here in the United States. Tell me, how many hearings has the House Intelligence Committee and Adam Schiff conducted since he's been chairman? The only hearings this man holds is one of a coup against a duly elected commander-in-chief. Tell me, how has Adam Smith taken any steps to protect our military or this country? And how has Nancy Pelosi done so? These questions don't get asked. Of course. Inform Congress. Barack Obama dropped 2,800, hello, 2,800 bombs on Syria and Iraq without ever going to Congress for any kind of authorization. Does anybody remember Pelosi or Schumer or Kane or any of the others saying a single syllable? against what Obama did. Not once. Barack Obama conspires with Russia, China, and the appeasers in Europe to give $150 billion to the Islamo-Nazi regime in Tehran, which has declared war on the United States. In fact, has taken steps to attack United States personnel. 
He gives them $150 billion. Thousands of American soldiers are maimed or killed. 607 killed. Thousands maimed. You've seen their pictures. They fill our military hospitals. As a result of what this subhuman cockroach did. Where are all the photos? Where are all the video? Where are all the documentaries? Where are all the reporters showing us the victims of this mass murder? Where are they? Whether the Gold Star families. Has one Gold Star family been interviewed? Has one husband or wife with a maimed husband or wife coming back from combat as a result of what this man did? Have they been interviewed? How about the hundreds of thousands of refugees in Syria? Look what's going on in Yemen. Look what's going on in Lebanon. This man, in large part, is responsible for this. But you wouldn't know it if you're one of the 12 people watching Joe Scarborough on MSNBC or one of the 15 people watching CNN. You wouldn't know it. And now every subsequent act of terrorism by this terrorist regime that has been practicing terrorism really uninhibited for almost 40 years, actually more than 40 years, now it's going to be Trump's fault. Trump's fault. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yes, don't you know? He hit a beehive with a stick. And now the bees are all around, you see. Hit a beehive with a stick? What are you, an idiot? Then you hear these Obama clowns on cable TV. They drag them in. They're the last ones who should be speaking. They gave aid and comfort to this regime. $150 damn billion dollars. Not to mention another $1.9 billion in hard currency ransom money. And they cover a dark. With planes who had their tail numbers removed so nobody would know. But we find out. Oh, what an act of courage by Obama. They tried to bring down Ronald Reagan. They called it the Iran-Contra affair. When he did far less than that. They're trying to remove our current president, who did nothing like that. What's the strategy, they say? What's the strategy here? I saw this Robert Menendez, the senior Democrat from New Jersey, always one step ahead of the law. What's the strategy here? It's not that we're upset about the taking out of this man, but what is the overall strategy? This Trump... He's so rash. He just does this stuff. Rash. He's been absolutely cerebral about what he's been wanting to do in foreign policy. And I'm going to get to the Trump doctrine in a minute. Nobody talks about the Trump doctrine. He has a doctrine. There's an actual doctrine out there. But the media is so full of hate. And Rand Paul and his ilk are so full of stupidity and ideology. You don't run foreign policy on ideology. You run foreign policy on prudence. Every event, every situation is not the same. And I'll get back to that in a minute. But the Democrat Party has yet again revealed itself. It revealed itself during slavery as the party of slavery. It revealed itself during segregation as the party of segregation. It revealed itself during Jim Crow as the party of Jim Crow. The Republican Party has never stood for any of those things. The Republican Party gave birth as an opposition party to slavery. Now, many of the Republicans and the leaders are feckless, don't get me wrong. But the Democrat Party is an ideological party, much unlike the Republican Party, quite frankly. And its ideology today is to hate America. Hate America and hate Americans. Open borders to change the demographics. Attack the cops. Attack the military. Attack religion and faith. Attack America's institutions. Attack the Constitution while waving it around and claiming you're defending it. Deposing the Electoral College. Turning the impeachment clause inside out. I got a lot to get to. 
But what's the strategy they want to know? And where's the evidence? Oh, Pompeo said future attacks were imminent. Where's the evidence? Did they ask for one scintilla scintilla of evidence when it came to Russia collusion in the Trump campaign? Where's the evidence? There's no evidence because it never happened. No, no, no. Where's the evidence? Did they ask for the evidence? No. They were actually the platforms for the liars and the felonious leakers in the Obama administration from the FBI and other institutions giving them the information so they could lie to the American people. Our press. What a joke. Absolute joke. There's plenty of examples of what this man had done to Americans and American soldiers. Not one of them has been shown on TV. Walter Reed Hospital, why don't they go over there? Why don't they go over there? Why don't they talk to some of these Gold Star families? Why don't they go to Syria? Why don't they go to Lebanon? Why don't they go to Yemen? And look at what this this iconic Iranian did. He's a martyr now. Good, but he's dead. That's the point. The President of the United States and the United States military are to be celebrated. They're to be thanked. But the Democrat Party and the Democrat Party media attack them. Attack them. It's with a phrase like, this guy was bad. He was a killer. But, but nothing. But nothing. Absolutely unbelievable. Every single Democrat running for president condemned the president of the United States. Not one of them is qualified to be commander-in-chief and protect this nation. Not one. If you can't speak against the planet's worst terrorist and condemn it, him, and thank the president unequivocally, you cannot be commander-in-chief of this country. And Pelosi and Tim Kaine and the others, they're proposing a resolution, ladies and gentlemen. Schumer says he backs them. Every Democrat backs them. A resolution against Iran, a resolution condemning their terrorism, a resolution thanking the President of the United States for what he did as they passed a resolution 100 to nothing in the Senate, thanking Obama for taking up bin Laden. No, it's a resolution to stop the President from stopping the enemy. What kind of insanity and sickness is this? What kind of insanity and sickness is it? They're actually glorifying the Soleimani. Glorifying him. He used to read poetry, don't you know? That's okay. Hitler used to write poetry, but they don't know that. Kaepernick. Kaepernick, what was it, USA Today said the greatest athlete of the, of the year or something like that, the most famous, whatever it was, said America killing brown and black people. So who's surprised? Look, you jackass, it's America defending brown and black people. The people in Lebanon, the people in Yemen, the people in Iraq, the people in Iran, a lot of them are brown and black. And last time I checked, most of them are not Americans, and most of them are not Christians. It's absolutely appalling. The biggest political party in this country is the Democrat Party, and it hates America. And you know what? When you think about it, it's always hated America. Socialism over capitalism, open borders over a nation state, international law over constitutional law. Centralized government over individual liberty. Government control over private property. This is their agenda. This is who they are. And when it comes to national security, they don't believe in it. And this is why it's been such a a laugh track for almost three years. When they pretend to be tough on Russia. Tough on Russia? They're not even tough on this guy, this, this, this subhuman cockroach who's responsible for the death of tens of millions. They're not even tough on him. 
He's a bad guy, but... But what? I'll be right back. Mark Levin.